Hello, everybody. How you doing? So, a uh, long time no see. I hope you all had a wonderful spring break. Um, I did. Nobody got sick. Yay. Win for me so far. Um, and my son had his birthday. Now he is nine. Where does the time go? And, and Monty, um, what did you do? Wait, we had a week off? Yeah, he napped the whole time. Just passed right out. Lucky guy. So I hope you had a restful one and didn't work the whole time. But, you know, hey, sometimes you got to put food on the table. I get it. I understand. So this week, um, again, I'm recording late because Monday I had to catch up on a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, on top of that, I've been trying to plan on what to do. I just got done editing the plant lecture that went on a whole lot longer than I thought it did. And hopefully after, right after this, I'm going to edit this lecture and put them both up at the same time, as well as some other things. And I'm going to be also trying to work on things, and you might be noticing in prior weeks, things might be popping up, and those things are um, optional. They are not uh, required for your grade, but if you'd like to do them, you know, just in case, have, have at the... So things might be popping in here, there, and everywhere, and I will tell you if it is a definite grade or not, or an optional grade. So uh, so look forward to updates in the future. Sorry, I've been quiet. I was trying to get everything ready before spring break, but then I had to work on the budgets so I can sit there and order things for classes for next semester. And that's new for me. This is the first year I've ever had to do that. So it was kind of a, there was a learning curve. There was a major learning curve on that one. I've never had a budget before. You know, when you're a high school teacher, you, you don't, they don't give you a budget. They just expect you to do it. So and now it's like, here's a budget. And I'm like, and they're like, and I'm like, yeah. So that's basically what was going on. So I apologize for not getting that up sooner. And Monty's kind of cold in here right now because the lab is always cold. It's a lab thing. Labs just run cold. Keeps down on smells and other things like that and transmission of microbes everywhere. But at the same time, it makes it nippy in here. So Monty's been hugging me a bit tightly in the neck area. But guess what, Monty? Today we get to talk about your favorite kingdom. The kingdom that we are from. The animal kingdom. Yay! Yay. So, and my bread and butter. So this is basically, if I thought last week's uh, lecture went long, this one might too. I might actually try to split this into two if I go over too long, but I sometimes get into some really wacky things um, in this kingdom because, like I said, this is this is where I concentrated in my studies over the years. So, actually, it was just funny. I was talking to um, uh, the other biology instructor here, uh, Dr. John Hules, and it was funny because he walked up this morning. It's raining today. Today's Wednesday, the uh, 22nd. But anyway, it was funny because it's rain. It's such a rainy day. And he walked up and he goes, you know what today's perfect for? And I said, what? And he goes, catching salamanders. And I'm like, he's right. Today's a perfect day for salamanders. It's also a perfect day. I said, boy, I wish we had some waders because we could go out into the pond or the lake or whatever they call it here. Still haven't figured out what they call this body of water out next to Patton. But anyway, um, I was thinking it would have been awesome to go out and catch some um, larval insect insects. Because right now in a lot of the streams, especially around here and um, in the water, uh, larval insects are going crazy. And he even said he was out hiking over spring break and he saw a bunch of stoneflies already out. Because we had a pretty mild winter. so. Brace yourself. The insects are coming. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, so let's go ahead and get into the animal kingdom. So anyway, so kingdom animalia. So remember, we're going to look over um, some major characteristics between everything and then go into basically how they came about. Because remember, when we talked about the plant kingdom last week, which hopefully you'll watch that lecture before you watch this lecture... Please don't watch it backwards. Um, I mentioned that one of the major things uh, that life had to figure out coming up out of the oceans was 
how not to dry out and how to have kids without water. So plants figured it out by basically making a waxy cuticle and having stomata. And then on top of that, they had, uh, then they figured out spores and then they figured out seeds. And that's, that works for plants. I mean, it works for plants insanely well. That's why they're the biggest of all the kingdoms via biomass. Um, and they are our, you know, overlords because without them setting the stage for the rest of us to come up out of the ocean, we wouldn't be here. So thank you, plants. Um, even though you drive me nuts. Um, but, you know, uh, animals, the animal kingdom didn't have photosynthesis and we had to figure out other ways to do that and we kind of had to prepare something for going up on the ocean because the sun was a deadly laser and until plants took care of that by helping create an atmosphere that we could actually breathe coming up out because remember the atmosphere when plants decided to take over was a lot of carbon dioxide we needed oxygen <laughs> we were the other half of the equation we need oxygen yo so so, so let's go over the overview right here. So remember, animals are heterotrophs. We have to eat other things to live. We do not produce. We do not have photosynthesis, even though some of us are very green. Although Monty's more of an olive color and tan, right? Monty doesn't see color. So what is color? Can you eat it? It's not his fault. Anyway, um, you know. It's not easy being green, and uh, even if they, you know, you find a nice green tree frog, that's just camouflage. They don't do photosynthesis. Um, animals, and because of that, we're mo mobile. So we're moving around. But there was an exception to this group, and we'll get to that in a minute. There's a big animals are mobile, except he lives in a pineapple under the sea. Anyway, um, animals are multicellular. Uh, animals are diploid. And so that means, remember, we have two sets of chromosomes, one half from our parents, um, one half each from our parents, excuse me. And animals mostly have a sexual, although there are some asexual by splitting off uh, the parent body, like, uh, you know, sponges. Uh, sponges can do these strange, strange things, which kind of makes you question SpongeBob SquarePants. But then a lot of things make me question that show. Anyway. Um, so animals do not have a cell wall, so we had to figure out, uh, okay, how do we grow against gravity without snapping? Um, so we had to do that, that same issue, although unlike plants, we kind of figured it out uh, more when we were in the ocean than outside. Um, we are made up of tissues and organs. We have body symmetry, which we're going to get into. Um, we really haven't seen that too much until up until now. And animals have an internal body cavity. We're a tube within a tube body plan, and I'm going to get into how that works unless you're a uh, sea cucumber and then you're kind of just a sleeping bag type. There's two body types. We'll get into that. And animals have body segmentation, which is, you know, why I can do this with my phalanges. <laughs> yes, the technical term for your fingers are your phalanges. I want phalanges. I just like saying the word phalanges. What do you think, Monty? Yeah, you lost your phalanges years ago. Actually, I will get into that, and I will show you on Monty here in a moment, that, yeah, actually, Monty um, still has, is one of the few snake species that still have remnants of when snakes had legs. What do you think about that, Monty? I had legs? When? Yeah. He's probably like, oh, that'd be weird. Anyway, so, so one of the major things, again, as I was just talking about, was the uh, tube within a tube body plan. And that's because after an egg and a sperm meet, let me go get my fuzzy eggs and sperm and show you a zygote. Oh, no, they're in the other pile. Hold on. I have to have props. I mean, you know, props are fun. This is a stem cell. Okay, so anyway. So, what do you think, Monty? Okay, fine. Be that way. I might get up and go get props several times during this. Anyway. So, once in an egg and a sperm meet. Boop. And keep in mind, um, actually, it's interesting. The first sperm to find the egg isn't the one that fertilizes the egg. A lot of people have that misconception. 
Um, it's actually these guys actually have to work together to dig through into the egg. And the one that reaches first actually kind of detonates a little uh, bomb of enzymes in the front to help dig, 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 dig. So, yeah, the first sperm is not the winner. <laughs> So if you didn't know that, now you do. But anyway, so we go into the zygote, which is basically what's happening is uh, the cell keeps reproducing, reproducing, going through mitosis, mitosis, mitosis. So it goes from one to two, two to four, four to eight, and then eight to 16. And that 16 starts becoming a round, hollow ball. And that is called a blastula. And a blastula um is really important because the blastula will then do something kind of cool he will invert um kind of like if you're playing with a squishy ball that doesn't really have an inside and you can pop one side in so it literally kind of turns into a dome a double walled dome i'm sure we've all had plastic balls that we've completely you know messed with like that they make so many toys like that and they make them i know i was just up at um wilderness in the smokies and you know the arcade had all the cheap balls you know you could do the crane game and wesley was trying to grab one in the crane game and he gave up one of uh, elsewhere because he likes getting all the tickets so he can buy stuff at the you know what you do in an arcade but we had a really good time it has a nice indoor water park um not as big as Wolf Lodge, though, but I digress. Anyway, so the reason it is important this is because when it flips up in, and let me get my laser pointer, as you can see right here. So we go from two, four, six, eight, and then 16, and it starts, or actually two, four, eight, sorry, 16, and then it starts pushing up in. And so it makes this double layer. So what's going on is we've got three layers now. We've got the uh, endoderm, which is the layer that's now been pushed up inside. They're doing some stuff in the lab next door and I don't know what, so sorry if there's noises. There's um, on the inner inside now, there's the mesoderm layer. And then the out, outer layer is the exoderm. And those three layers start turning into different parts and different organs, depending on which creature you're talking about. Now, in you know, more uh, robust creatures like ourselves and Monty here, yeah, we actually, you know, um, you know, uh, our endoderm, this is stuff that turns into stuff like our um Hopefully I'm remembering this correctly because it's been a minute from my anatomy and physiology from last semester. Actually, how about we do this? Doop -doop -doop -doop. Three original layers of the blastula into organ systems. I want to double check so I'm set. Okay, so the ectoderm obviously gives rise to the skin. Okay, mesoderm gives rise to muscle cells and connective tissues, and endoderm gives rise to your dis, uh, digestive and other internal organs. Yeah, I just wanted to double check make sure I wasn't speaking lies. You know, I didn't want to assign the wrong thing to the wrong thing. So anyway, so now these two body plans, like I said, one becomes um, sometimes what happens is a little later down in development, another hole opens up and that turns into the anus. So usually this front end becomes the mouth, the back end becomes the anus. And that's where that tube in a tube body plan, because this part becomes the alimentary canal, which is basically your digestive tract, which starts at your mouth, goes down your esophagus into, you know, your stomach, and then your stomach kicks it out into the duodenum. And then it goes into the, um, into your uh you know small intestines and the small intestines go into the large intestines and the large intestines lead out and you go to the bathroom so however there are some creatures that we're going to talk about them in a minute that decided or just for whatever reason never develop the the second hole and their mouth is also their anus 
yeah so they literally have to eat and poop out the same hole aren't you glad you're not a sea cucumber or a sea pig because yeah they only have one hole and some of them some of them for whatever reason make great homes for the pearl fish which live in their mouth butt life is amazing all right so moving on so again ah i see i put it up on my own notes and i did read the notes my own notes before this or at least i skimmed through them so ectoderm uh turns into your outer layer of skin your nervous system and your sensory organs like your eyes your endoderm develops into the lining of your digestive tract your respiratory system lungs and other digestive organs and your mesoderm develops into your skeleton and muscles and circulatory system which is your blood your veins your arteries and your reproductive organs so these are the different organ um systems that arise from the three original layers now i do talk about this again like if you take anatomy and physiology with somebody that gets talked about at the beginning um what so now because animals have a unique body plan the term is used to describe shape uh symmetry and internal organization because we have to be a little bit more organized than plants. Plants do not have uh, sensory structures like we have sensory structures. You know, plants don't really have to worry about, um, you know, predators by looking for them. You know, we, you know, because <laughs> we're mobile, we had to come up with ways to figure out where we are in our uh, 3D space, our environment. So, uh, you know, plants don't usually have to worry about that if they don't want somebody messing with them they have different ways of preventing that like having a very thick cuticle or bark or sap having the sap that comes out the trap things or um tasting really really bad or you know unfortunately some places it's backfired with with, with peppers because you know us crazy humans <laughs> we're like yeah we we love all the capsaicin that you you uh red you peppers make and so we're just going to breed you until you make so much of it that all the crazy diehards who love the, the heat eat it apparently the carolina reaper might get upset soon um as king of the hottest of peppers because they've taken a reaper and something else there's two that have not been uh verified completely yet but there's like pepper x and there's another one i can't think of the name of that's coming out the only reason is because i have a morbid curiosity not because i'm actually i'm a heat weenie i'm an absolute weenie for you know i i look at people in awe that can down a carolina reaper in front of me and i'm just like what? yeah i'm a weenie i'm a weenie are you a weenie you don't even have taste buds anyway so asymmetrical um these are regular shapes depends on where they're growing sponges have asymmetrical they're pretty much the only ones in the animal kingdom that do sponges are the weird outlier uh sorry spongebob but you're you're weirder than you know and we'll get into that when we talk about sponges radial so these have parts arranged in the central axis like spokes of a wheel um basically most animals with radial symmetry you only find in the ocean because that's a good place to have it sea stars are an example of radial um but the majority of life on earth we are bilateral so you can split us in half and we have a distinct right and left half that mirror each other so even with monty here i mean you can see it he's got you know eyes on either side of his head he's got his heat pits right here and he's like why are you doing this mother stop it show them show them how cute you are anyway so you, you like i said you can split them down the middle and each half will mirror each other and that also works for internal organs for the most part as well for the most part there's some things that, like monty he's only got one working lung because uh most snakes only have one working lung uh because that's all they can fit in their body and the other lung is kind of like a little wet vestigial organ that's left over yes which is why a lot of snakes actually die of respiratory illnesses mm -hmm. and that's why i'm very careful with monty which is why i need to go get another heat 
lamp for him because it's a bit nippy in this lab and now he's leaving on my glasses and that's not cool hey no all your glasses belong to me see. all right where were we so as you can see we got radial symmetry here um you'll see sea anemones like that sea stars uh bilateral is where you split it and each side mirrors each other um again we've got some uh different you know depending on where you're looking at things so oral especially for radial symmetry is at the top a boral is at the bottom you know hopefully where the opposite end is uh bilateral so you know along their back sides the dorsal is by on dolphins it's called the dorsal fin um the ventral is our stomach side um anterior is our front side and posterior of course is our back side all right now Another thing you'll notice in the animal kingdom that you don't see in any other kingdom is cephalization, in which my snake is getting a bit too nippy, so he's starting to pop my cephalization off. All right, stop that. Be good. So, now, the uh, cephalization basically means all creatures with bilateral symmetry uh have their sensory structures located in their anterior section which we call the head so the term cephalo means head uh, and basically there is a and this is true for all like i said bilateral creatures there's an increase of nervous tissue we call it the brain and um and it increases in complexity like for instance uh brains have formed with accessory organs like our eyes um our nose um taste which actually came out of smell. We're going to get into that in a minute. There's a, actually, there's a reason why sometimes you can taste what you smell. Actually, there's a water uh, company that's banking on that. They have a, they, they don't have flavored water. It's, it's, they have these scent pods. You pop down over the mouth of your water bottle. And because it smells, it tastes, the water suddenly tastes exactly how it smells. And it's a cool trick because, uh, taste actually evolved out of smell we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute so that's why they're very 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 linked um so anyway so that's why we have a lot of our major sensory organs located in our brain because again it's it's a distance thing we talked about in the last chapter how diffusion works best over short distances um and the same thing uh we want to have insta feedback you know, when we see, you know, danger coming, if zombies are coming to eat me, I want to be able to see them. And I want my brain to be able to, you know, pick up, oh, God, there's danger. Maybe you should run um, quickly. You know, if my eyes were in my, I don't know, elbows, A, we'd have to do this all the time. And B, I wouldn't sense it as fast because it's not right next to my brain for quick processing. So if you're ever wondering why your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth are all really, really neck close to your brain, reason is, is so that way we can have faster, uh, you know, sensory times for uh, inputs going in and us going, oh, God, dinosaurs are coming to eat me. And then you run away. So survival instincts. Um quicker processing power anybody who, who's ever messed with computers can kind of tell you that or even uh sound systems you know the longer the the longer the uh cord the less resolution you get so which is something you know my son wants to do is have his own youtube video or channel excuse me so fun stuff fun stuff uh, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to make our house somewhat a recording studio, kind of, sort of. Anyway. So, yeah, one of the things I came up with is having these cameras all over the place. Not exactly. We're not doing that just to have him. But I'm my computer be the main processing hub is still. I'm working it out. So. The longer the cord, it's usually the worst quality I'm going to get off that camera. Um, so, yeah, it's the same thing with biological systems. Remember, guys, where did the idea of computers come from? Basically, our own, the study of our own brain. So we're always trying to increase and make our computers better and everything with the CPUs and the chipsets and all that stuff. 
And it's really basically why, you know, now we're hitting AI pretty hard. I mean, if you've been watching the chat, was a GPT and now Monty's going up in my hair. It's warm in your hair. Can you see this? Anyway. Snakes. Um, and all that argument over art AI, which is a very fascinating argument. You know, they, that's basically what are we trying to replicate with computers? We've been trying to kind of replicate a human brain in a way. So, fun. All right, so your system. So majority of animals have the following uh, body systems. Digestion, because uh, we need energy, because we're heterotrophs, you know, so we need to be able to digest what we eat. Respiration, because we that's the other half to making ATP in our mitochondria. Remember, ATP is the energy source of our cells. So digestion is to get the carbohydrates, the sugars, and um, respiration is uh, to get the oxygen that we need to form ATP. So those two systems are very much needed to stay alive. Circulation, so that way we can get the oxygen around and the carbohydrates around to get to the mitochondria of all the cells that make us up. Um, and circulation can be open or closed. We're going to talk about that when we go through each of the different groups in the animal kingdom. Nervous system, so that way we know we're stepping on Legos and going, oh my God, pick up. Uh, <laughs> or any other thing like the other day i was uh walking through the trail and uh i had something go right up through my soul on my 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 toe shoes and i was just like oh dang toe shoes are getting old anyway uh support the uh, skeleton or exoskeleton we'll get into the pros and cons of each in a minute and um what goes in must come out so excretion and then the one that actually doesn't necessarily needed for living living but we need it for to continue our species which is reproductive um yeah it's the only system out of all these systems right here which is all the things you study in anatomy and physiology if you so choose to take that in the future um the only one we don't need to live live is your reproductive system we only need that to just propagate the species you don't need it so it's interesting now, animal kingdom is split into two phyla, and it's pretty easy to see why. And that is, we basically got animals with backbones and animals without backbones. Monty and I and you are all in the backbones, which were known as vertebrates, because we have vertebra, we have a backbone. Actually, I have several backbones in here. If you come to the lab, you will see many backbones hanging out in the skeletons. I even have a real skeleton and a real skull and a real brain and some other things too. But we all have, you know, we have internal skeletons. We'll get into that in a moment. So does Monty. Monty also has a backbone. Yes. I don't know why that is, but I've, I, I surprise a lot of people by telling that, yeah, snakes have bones. Um, and that's actually something, um, if you ever have a pet snake or anything like that, or, you know, if you're brave and you want to pet a, sm a snake, don't drop them because they can actually, they're basically a skull, a really long backbone and a whole bunch of ribs. I mean, they're constantly just ribs, 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 ribs. And in Monty's case, he does have a little bit of a, a hip left and something, and I'll get to that in a minute when I get into reptiles. Um, so... You know, snakes do have backbones. They have a lot of ribs. And if you drop them, um, a rib can very easily break, puncture his internal uh, uh, organs, and he can actually uh, bleed to death. So, yeah, it's, it's not great for dropping snakes. Although, like I said, black rats, and maybe I didn't say this, black rats are kind of dorks. They, they have a bad habit of climbing up and falling down like a bunch of ding-dongs that they are. Oh... And I've seen Monty do it too in his tank. Um, I have a uh, camera with night vision in there just in case. Because once upon a time he got kidnapped. And if you want that story, let me know and I'll tell you at another time. Um, I don't know if we have time right in this lecture or not. But anyway, he got kidnapped. So I have a, a hidden camera in there with night vision. And I've watched him at like midnight go up and then fall like a dingbat. And I'm like, <laughs> and I go in and check him. He's okay, but climbing snakes are not the brightest anyway but then again we're also the species that enjoys going up the top of mount everest and risking dropping dead and being frozen to the mountain for eternity so 
Who's to say? All right. So anyway, so we're going to go into creatures uh, that are invertebrates first, because that's pretty much uh, the earliest uh, creatures that ever came about on our planet. Uh, the making of an internal skeleton and whatnot was actually uh, way, 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 way down the road, evolutionarily speaking, um, because they didn't need it in the ocean, if you think about it. So let's go ahead. So the first creatures, they just don't even have bones, and um, they are the sponges or porphyra. So these guys are really, really, really an interesting throwback. They're kind of one of the, like I said, every rule about the animal kingdom that I've almost said, I kind of had a but, but, but. Yeah, this is the but of the whole animal kingdom and why we start here. Because these guys are really, really simple. Also notice a throwback to our friend the fungi. Remember when we talked about the cells that had a collar and flagella? And that's how you knew, ha, huh? fungi? Yeah, these guys are the simplest of the animal kingdoms. Uh, they don't have any true tissues, organs, mouth, and gut. Again, they just have that bag, that uh, sleeping bag thing. They just have a mouth, if you can call it that. It's actually called the osculum. And they have uh, holes all the way through. They're called ostia. So they're not even really a mouth. So it's, they've got a major hole, the osculum, and the, the little holes, the ostia. So, and that's basically for water to flow through because they're filter feeders. They're sessel, which means they do not move. So SpongeBob is a lie. Of course, SpongeBob is also a yellow um, uh, plastic sponge. Yeah, those uh, washing sponges are actually made of plastic. Um or whatever color i've got them too and they're all in, you know anyway so so they they have collar cells with a collar and flagella which is a throwback to fungi so we might be our own fungi among us <laughs> actually no we came from a common ancestor we are not fungus <laughs> fungus is fungus that's why they get their own kingdom animals is animals however we did come from a common common ancient 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 ancestor that had a collar cell collars and a flagella that's why we share that characteristic in the very first creatures so they're mostly marine um their filter feeders as their water canals are lined with flagella called collar cells and they help push the water through so that's their job is literally they sit there and they let ocean currents basically uh filter uh bacteria or not bacteria but very 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 very, very tiny tiny living creatures through which is usually plankton um and they just eat that and they're kind of unfortunately uh stuck where they are which is you know they you see a lot of really cool ones around uh, corals and whatnot but a lot of corals are dying off because um the ocean's getting more direct sun in those areas because the ocean is actually getting uh it's it's an act uh, because the ocean's heating up some creatures are having a hard time to adapt and as you can see sponges don't exactly get up and walk off if the conditions are incorrect they just die so anyway they reproduce asexually by budding off a part of themselves can you imagine doing that just like one day there's a little bud and you go oh no it's a pimple and no it's a little mini you that's just and then it will pop off and grow up into another you <laughs> So, having given birth to a son, I'm not sure which is worse. <laughs> so anyway, what do you think? Stuff buds off of me all the yeah. time. Oh, wait. That's shedding. Anyway. Different thing, I guess. So, sponges. S the simplest of the animal kingdom. And most interesting. In a way, I guess. So now we move up to Nidaria. So this is an, uh, sea anemones, corals, and jellyfish. So, and this, again, I'm going to be touching on these groups as I go along. These groups are huge. Okay, so getting back to these guys. So this is the first true tissue. So this is actually where we get to see some tissue division, but they still have no gut or anus. They have an incomplete digestive tract. So again, we're still stuck with that. Uh, we're still stuck with that uh bag 
yeah, that uh, sleeping bag thing, but in different arrangements. They have very, but these are why we don't go hugging them because they have uh, an interesting way of protecting themselves. So they're not eaten. And that is, they uh, have cells called nididocytes that can shoot out nidiae. And one type is called a nematocyst. And basically it shoots out a harpoon-like structure that stings and numbs whatever touches it. And it's like that. It goes off even if it's dead, which is why, you know, people tell you, do not go playing with the jellyfish you find washed up on the beach. Um, so it stings and numbs whatever touches it. An interesting fun fact. Uh, this is actually where we got the idea for... Um, for um why do shock collars keep coming up into my head that's not what i'm that's not where we got the idea for that um tasers see this is why i miss having people with me so they can shoot things when my brain derails uh you mean tasers uh you know, taser guns. There we go. Taser guns. So, you know, because the taser gun, what it does is it shoots a dart out with a wire going back to the gun that electrifies the wire going into you. And then you scream, fall down and go to the bathroom. Unvoluntarily. It's not fun. But this same thing, except they do it with, you know, um, a similar structure. So basically somebody looked at that and said, you know, I bet we I could recreate that with electricity. And dun, 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 here we have you know um those uh those guns that shoot those instead and i've heard if you get hit by them it's not so fun and stuff like that ow same thing with these guys these guys can kill like a portuguese man of war now interestingly enough they can be solitary or they can be colonial. Portuguese man of war, since we're talking about them, is actually colonial. So the floaty bag on the top just lets them float around in the ocean currents. But all these different tendrils are actually different creatures. So what you're looking at is a floaty island of creatures. So a Portuguese man of war is not just one creature. It's actually many, many creatures living on a floaty, floaty bag. But they're still dangerous as all get out because if something basically goes swimming through that or touches these psychos, the, the matocysts all explode. And then he basically, these guys pull them on up and digest and dismantle what they need and drop the rest. So, yeah, that's why Portuguese man of wars are considered insanely dangerous. Um, there are some jellyfish that did not uh, evolve uh, basically uh, any uh, uh, nidocytes. Um, there's the sun jellyfish. They actually exist in this one um, um, lake. I think it's in Africa and in africa and they actually follow the sun because they actually have a symbiosis with um i'm not sure if it's a plant or an algae that lives in their in their tissues and they actually follow the sun across the lake so they can actually get maximum amount of um food from photosynthesis from the algae living in them or the plant living in them so it's actually really interesting so sun jellyfish they don't have this at all nobody eats them nobody bothers them they just follow the sun and go back down to the bottom of the lake and then come up in the morning and, and keep going and going it's really interesting you can swim right through them and nothing hurts then they won't hurt you you can poke them they'll just go oh so anyway um it's actually kind of interesting um they have now a very interesting life stages they have two life stages and it's the sessile and mobile life stages, or motile, depending on how you want to do that. So they have two body plants. They have the polyp and the medusa, which honestly is named quite aptly. The medusa is the one we think about all the time. Um, the one, you know, that looks like an upside down parachute going wee, wee that's the medusa life cycle so that's the one that's moving around and eating food and stuff like that and what happens is sometimes it finds a male or a female and um it will drop uh, its gonads and the two will fertilize in the ocean again 
You'll notice we're using the ocean for fertilization. We have not figured out how to go up on land yet with these creatures. But keep in mind, these are also modern versions of what was in the ocean uh, millions and millions of years ago. So these are the de descendants of what was there. They are not what was there millions of years ago. A lot of people get this confused in uh, biology. They're like, oh, well, this was there millions of, no, ancestors that were like them, yes. But they themselves, no. So anyway, so it fertilizes in the ocean because, hey, don't need to contain it. And it turns into a larva and then it plants itself. Though now the plants, when it plants itself, it starts growing into what's known as a polyp. And the polyp is where baby medusas are developed from that fertilization back here. Yeah, I know, this is crazy. So fertilization back here, plants, and then it grows, grows, grows into a polyp with these structures where the developing medusa, and it, it's a filter feeder right here, and the polyps develop and pop off uh, new medusa or the sexually mature, um, you know, mobile stage. So it goes back and forth between what we know and what we've ever seen of a jellyfish and the polyp, which is producing uh, baby uh, medusas to go out. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that weird? It's so interesting. So he's got a two body plan thing going on here. The polyps making the babies and the Medusa, you know, making the uh, gonads. It's interesting. All right. This is where we're going to get each, into interesting land. So anyway, next one are the flatworms. Um, we're going to hit several different worms going through here. So the flatworms are uh, platythementh. Oh, God. I know I can say this. Come on. Platy. Platy helimenthes, platy helimenthes, thank you, includes the planarians, flukes, tapeworms, and ribbon worms. Um, some are freshwater, but the majority of these guys are marine, and mostly they're parasitic. And some of them are really interesting. All of these guys are hermaphrodites, um, which means they're both male and female. Um, they've got a very simple nervous system, they do have a brain. At one end and a nervous cord going down. So we do have the beginnings of a nervous system. Um, it's getting more complicated. Now, these guys are interesting. Uh, tapeworms, unfortunately, we know them well. This is one that actually came out of a human. Look how huge that is. Now, tapeworms are freaky in the fact that they literally... What you see here is actually not the body. Tapeworms just have a head that looks like... Here, let me show you. It's just like... A whole bunch of suckers. It's not pretty. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's the eyes. Those are like suckers. So they basically burrow in and start. What they do is they absorb uh, food. Yeah, isn't that fun? They burrow in and absorb food out of your uh, intestine. Because that's basically where you're trying to absorb all your uh, food as well. So they just go right to the source and absorb it out of you. And then you've done all the digestion for him. Thanks. I'm going to steal all your food now. So he steals all your nutrients. And what happens is after this one point right here, all these parts right here. So this is literally the tapeworm right here. This top part. All these parts, these segments coming off, those are egg pods. Yeah. Each one of these is an egg pod. If it pops off, it's got the eggs to make more of these. Yeah. If you didn't know that, I'm sorry. Oh, it gets worse. So imagine the length of this sucker right here. Imagine how many egg pods that's got to be. Oh, God. Now, um, another funny thing. So get this, tapeworm uh, diet. Yeah, once upon a time, the tapeworm diet. <laughs> there were people 
uh, in the Victorian age that would literally, uh, yeah, they would, they were in Victorian age. They were really, really concerned with beauty. You think we're bad in this day and age with social media and everything like that. Victorian age and Edwardian age. Oh my God. So anyway, the thing was, you got to be like, your stomach's got to be like nothing. Uh, you know, thank you. All these crazy stuff. So they'd have surgeries to try and like skinny fit it. And then, so the ideal beauty back then was like uh, pale skin, dilated eyes, rosy cheeks, crimson lips, uh, and a very fragile figure and extreme hourglass figure for the ladies. They wanted that perfect 16 inch waist. I, I can't even imagine that. Oh God. So anyway, so that's why yay corsets but anyway so one of the things they decided to do was uh stay thin forever by putting tapeworm eggs remember those packets i was talking about those little things it was taking them drying them out because you could you can dry them out and the minute they hit liquid or water get inside of a body they'll just resuscitate and yay tapeworms get born out of the eggs ew so they would put the dried up tapeworm um uh, eggs in in food you'd eat and therefore you'd stay skinny because the tapeworms would grow inside of you and suck out all your nutrients and people died of this i just want you to know so yeah yummy so anyway tapeworms the victorian era diet pill fun oh uh if you've never uh, checked out atlas obscura i love this website uh, they're they've got some really cool things so anyway craziness all right go back shoo thank you i was trying to get back though okay my other favorite thing i want to show a tiny little video if i can find it and that is um flat form uh oh let's see so okay yeah here it is this one's a real quick video i want to show it to you it's uh from the bbc channel um it's called the mating game it's in the vein of you know or planet earth and stuff like that but flatworms again like i said flatworms are an interesting species hello uh sorry for this interruption from future me but unfortunately the clip i was trying to show when i uploaded the whole thing uh that was a part of this recording to youtube it flagged it as copyrighted content even though i'm using it in an educational way so what i'm going to do instead of showing you this clip i'm going to hopefully give you the link right here Hopefully it will show up here and you can go watch it for yourself. It's really interesting. Uh, highly recommend as most things I do. Um, if you want to watch how flatworms mate, which is them actually fighting, um, trying to impregnate each other. So imagine you're dating somebody and then you get into a knife fight and whoever gets hit with the knife is the one that gets pregnant. Except with flatworms. Aren't you glad you're human? Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled me yapping about the animal kingdom. Wrong place. See you later. Bye. All right. <laughs> Platinum meth, please. These guys are crazy. So there you go. And then my other favorite guys are the planarians. So planarians um, in this group, and I'm sure my face is in the way. And every time I move it, I actually am moving my, my head around on my screen but it keeps it right there on the recording which is really annoying but uh look at my notes there's a guy in the corner that has kind of a triangle head he's right here and he's uh one of the few creatures on this planet that if you cut him in half you will get two new planarians planarians are really cool in the fact that they can literally you can cut them any way you want to and they'll just completely and utterly regenerate um and you can do some crazy things uh look it up sometime although they're really hard to cut but you can cut them they trust me i've chased them around on a petri dish before they're like whoa, whoa. they're fast but they have this triangle head this is a planarian right here and um as you can see 
um, if you cut them anywhere, like if I cut it like right here, uh, basically I'd get a planarian with this head and he'd grow a new tail and a tail that would literally grow a new head. You can even cut sections of their heads and get one with like two heads. Like if I cut this head in half, you'd get two heads um, or multiple or same thing with the rear end. If I cut the rear end in half, it would grow back into two rear ends. So it's just really interesting creatures. So anyway, so the flatworms are interesting. But come, let us go more into even more crazy things. So now we're finally hitting our tube within a tube body plan. Yay, we're here finally. We're getting a rear end. Isn't that nice? <laughs> and hopefully nobody's stabbing each other with their penises. Dang, flatworms, you guys are crazy. Anyway, so this is Nematoda, or the roundworms. Freshwater, marine, terrestrial, and again, parasitic. Most people know them as uh, uh, heartworms and dogs. This is why we feed the do our dogs that pill every month, so they don't get this. This is a dog heart infected with uh, roundworms. Isn't that insane? So, yes, if you have dogs, please continue feeding them their monthly pill against this, because this is a horrid way to go. Once they get in, they go straight for the heart, and then they absorb all their nutrients from the blood being pumped through the heart. Unfortunately, they clog everything, and then the dog's heart can't, A, move, because it's literally clogged with heartworms, and B, they can't get any, you know, uh, blood around which remember is delivering oxygen much needed oxygen to the rest of the body and um uh and uh, you know uh nutrients i don't know why it took me so long to spit that out so anyway these guys do have a complete digestive tract so we finally have a mouth and an anus uh they also have a cloaca which is an opening for several systems so it isn't just an anus it's also a place to for reproduction to happen as well um, they have simple muscles, so now we're finally getting a muscle. As you can see here, here's a up close and personal of a round worm where you can see the intestine actually going all, the, or the alimentary canal going all the way through to the cloaca at the back end. So we finally have developed rear ends. Yay! Except we get them in our dog's hearts. Boo! Doggies don't deserve that. Anyway, now let's talk about a really interesting group, and that is mollusca. So this is snails, bivalves, squids, and slugs. So these are marine, freshwater, and terrestrial, I'm sure. I have fights with the slugs in my garden, and I'm sure I'm going to have them major. They eat my peppers. All I want is from the horticulture group to go by, you know, I go here at Blue Ridge over when they have their plant sale because I support them. And I go and I get squash and I get, you know, all sorts of different things. And my tomatoes, I've got, I love Cherokee purples. And I keep getting those black peppers because they look so good. And the slugs eat them. I have tried to, I've tried everything to put around them to stop eating my freaking slugs. Anyway, so the soft bodies um, in a shell, except for slugs. Anyway, um, bivalve means two valves. They have a foot, which is actually uh, why they're called gastropods, slugs or gastropods, um, or stomach foots. Uh, so they do have a foot for locomotion, but what they do is they literally travel, they glide on a, a line of mucus. So imagine emitting mucus from the bottom of your feet and sliding across it, <laughs> which, you know, we did not invent roller skates, I guess, but it's their version of wheelies. Um, now, these guys are insanely smart. Insanely smart. Not so much the slugs and the slugs, the snails and the slugs. Um, I, you know, well, they've outsmarted me to my pepper, so I guess they're smart. But, um, squids and octopi, the cephalopods, which means head foot. They are insanely smart, which is why they don't need a backbone to be insanely intelligent um squids and um, octopi have been kind of outsmarting us forever it's hysterical because um if they're not happy in aquariums they leave i'm not kidding you they they break out of everything we've done tests with just how intelligent they are and we're pretty sure that they're smarter than us 
Um, you can take an octopus, put it in a jar, screw the cap closed, and it will inscrew, unscrew it from the inside and leave. Um, cuttlefish, which is in the squid family, they come up there. Some of them are known to be extremely aggressive, um, so they'll attack people. But some are known to just swim up and rip stuff off of divers, look at it, and then put it back. Um, just to see what it is. I mean, could you imagine you're swimming along, just checking things out, and they come up and they grab something? Off. Like, imagine if you've got your phone and like the waterproof bags now that they make, and then they... <laughs> just suddenly a cuttlefish rips it off and goes, "Oh, Twitter, what's your password?" <laughs> so I mean, I wouldn't put it past. Him. I would not put it past them. Um, so, and these guys are ancient some of the for basically uh some of the first uh life in the oceans started thinking about developing armor so that way it would protect itself from them and that's basically where some of these shells came from um a lot of cephalopods don't it doesn't look like they have shells on the outside it's because on the inside they've kind of put their their skin on the outside and their shell on the inside and their beaks they have these huge beaks that just conch um but we have excellent fossil records of the ancestors of these guys going back many 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 millennia one of the here's you know some of these guys are just absolutely gorgeous um and like i said insanely smart and we haven't found all of them yet um we're still looking for uh some of the colossal giant squid down the oceans um whales uh sperm whales actually fight these guys and bring them up and um, we found their dead bodies up above wash up on shore very rarely or we found it in the gut of a, a sperm whale um, when sp sperm whales die and wash ashore as well we found them that way also sperm whales have scars because these are sperm whales are the whales that can dive deepest of any mammal um in the ocean they're designed for that there's also the biggest but they actually have scars up their mouths in the patterns of the suckers on the uh, squids tentacles because uh squids unlike octopi octopi you can stick your hand in and um you know their suckers don't have teeth uh squid all of their suckers have teeth so ow so imagine a colossal squid fighting back and it's leaving scars down the, the cheeks of a sperm whale. Also, fun fact, um, because their nervous system isn't exactly centralized, um, each one of their uh, 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 arms is like a separate brain, but the same brain. It's kind of interesting. The nervous system of these guys is really interesting. Um, so when a, uh, octopus, uh, you know, if you've ever been to an aquarium and you've gotten to touch in the, like, you know, I, I've had octopi, you know, touch me before, um, they're tasting you too. It's not just touch. They're literally tasting you. They go, oh, well, you taste like a nice person. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's like you're shaking hands with somebody and like, oh, you're extra salty. And I don't mean that in like, you're being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> or like oh you're pretty caffeinated right now aren't you <laughs> it's just wow okay so be thankful we don't taste each other when we shake hands like octopi do so really interesting really uh deep 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 ancestry here um because we have a lot of the fossil evidence of these guys and again one of the first creatures or at least these guys ancestors basically started sitting there going you know if we wore armor we probably wouldn't get eaten as much so maybe we should figure out ways to wear armor shells so a lot of interesting things in these it's sad that i can only touch on these and go there's so many weird things in each one of these but octopi are really amazing really really amazing and so are squids and so like we still haven't found the biggest of them like i said it was talking about you know all the dead bodies that washed up and everything we think those are babies uh we've got a one here maybe i can pull up the video we've got one video uh Denise, footage, footage of giant squid. There was a, see, these are dead ones. Hmm. 
Yeah. I'm not sure which one's which. See, there's dead ones, but um See, I don't like Discovery Channel. They've gone too. They've gone too too. You know what I mean? Japanese okay. Is this it? That one looks dead. That's live? That doesn't look like it. Because he is still alive. He doesn't look so good. I hope we don't get stupid things. See, that's stupid things. It's just... We had a light. Is this it? This looks like it. See, they've added spooky music to it to be spooky. What's that? Okay, I guess I'll give up. There. <laughs> But anyway, there was a Japanese sub that went down pretty deep, and they flashed the strobe light. Sometimes they turn it; on, they have to turn it off, or else things come up at them. But they'll strobe light, and um, uh, they'll find uh, creatures that way. Um, and a giant squid came and grabbed something, but it was like a blip. Um, and they measured that one, and it was absolutely huge. Um, I was trying to, like I said, I'm sorry, I didn't find the. If I find the the footage, I'll play it here, or I'll uh, I'll edit it in, or I'll go uh, slap you a link so you can go watch it yourself. It was a couple of years ago, though, before COVID, I think. Anyway, worms. So now we finally hit the segmented worms. So these are the ones we know and love, earthworms, especially if you like fishing, or if you're like me and such a bleeding heart goober butt that you know when it rains too hard, you take the worms and throw them off the sidewalk and throw them back in the. Uh, um throw them back in the dirt because you know don't want them drying out the next day uh this includes earthworms tube worms and leeches so earthworms very interesting very integral um they have a very it was we got a, a lot more uh going on here and they have several hearts could you imagine having five hearts? Well, that's because they have an open circulatory system. So the circulatory system hasn't closed, but we have a circulatory system. We have a brain. We have a ganglion, which is actually uh, the beginning of a higher order brain, actually. And if you've ever taken anatomy and physiology, you actually will go over how brains basically went wrong, evolved as they did into what we've got today, which is actually very interesting. Um, but you'll notice that they again they have ovaries and they have um they have sperm ducts as well. Again, these guys are uh, hermaphroditic. They're both male and female. And uh, earthworms actually have three hour long sex sessions. Uh, what they do is they find each other, and I guess if they find each other acceptable, they produce a ton of mucus and glue themselves to each other for at least three hours. And while they're glued together through their mucus, yum, they exchange sperm through the mucus. Because, again, we need water for that. So, okay. You know, it's how they do. Who am I to judge? Anyway, uh, leeches are also segmented worms. Again, you'll see the reason they're segmented is they have all the segmentation in their bodies. Um, so we're getting more and more complicated as we go through. Uh, they have a linear body with few segments, so that way they can move around a lot more. Um, these guys like burrowing and um, literally eating dirt. And thanks to them, um, worm castings are uh, great for your garden. Again, if you're a gardener, you know your friend the earthworm is good for your garden as well as other different types of worms too. And I think bread worms um because they'll actually cast off they'll make these castings of their uh outer layer of their skin 
and um and also they're digesting the dirt and adding you know sucking out nutrients but they're also adding their own types of uh, nutrients to it so they process the dirt much more and actually enrich it so these guys are good for us leeches are kind of a we actually still use leeches in medicine so yeah leeches are neat because uh leeches actually make an anticoagulatory which means it doesn't let the blood when uh blood touches air or not exactly air but it coagulates after a while um and that's that's good for us if we get a cut because then it you know helps make a a, a clot so that way we don't keep bleeding out um and so what they do is they uh, live on our blood unfortunately or fortunately depending on what's going on and um what they do is they actually inject an anticoagulant so that way the blood doesn't clot up and they can keep drinking and drinking and drinking until they're full and when they're full they pop off and uh it's really interesting because again i mean you've probably heard of you know the medieval they used to put leeches on people to get out the 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 impure blood because they used to believe that there was the four humors that made up human health and like if the humors were in balance so sometimes you had too much blood in your system which is no you have you should have just enough blood in your system unless you unless you're anemic that's a different story but um so sometimes if you had too much blood their logic um they'd suck they'd put leeches on you but interestingly enough, we still use leeches today, especially when we're doing reattachment. So say you got your finger chopped off in a horrible accident, and I hope you never do. I'm just saying, hypothetically, uh, how we actually save fingers these days and whatnot. So when we reattach it, um, what we try to do, A, first throw it in some ice uh, to keep it as cool as humanly possible. Um, so that way the cells, uh, you know, don't die. They just go into, you know, a little bit of a, you know, slow down. So anyway, um, I don't want to say suspended animation because it's not quite it. Um, so A, throw it nice. B, get thine rear end to uh, the ER. And C, uh, when they reattach it, what they do is they try to line up all the vessels and everything to reattach. But the problem is the blood is clotting. So we actually attach leeches, and this is what you can actually see on this guy right here. They put leeches on his finger or thumb or toe or something. And uh, what's happening is uh, they, they're the anticoagulants that they actually uh, eject goes through the part, the finger that is healing or the piece that is healing. They've done it with hands and you know, done it with a lot of things. And so that way it keeps the blood clots out and allows the finger to reattach and heal under its own power. Instead of pumping you full of anticoagulants, these guys do it locally for you and they get a meal in the process while sa help saving your finger. Isn't that insane? So we actually do, if you go to hospitals, they ha usually have live leeches hanging out um, in one of the labs because... If we need to reattach a, a limb, I mean, even a limb, you know, we use leeches to help uh, uh, make sure that the reattachment happens and blood clots don't screw it up. So, interesting. So, again, interesting bunch. All right. So, that's the simple animals. Again, I'll try to get... You, you and I both know No, we don't people. know. Goodbye. All right, so now we get into one of my favorite groups. This is the biggest group. This is considered the most successful animal phylum. This is the biggest group of all of, but they should be separated. Um, I slap them together. They should not be slapped together because arthropoda should be in a couple of different things because spiders are not insects and insects are not spiders. So these guys are a definite nod into how life came up out of the oceans and sort of started surviving um, away from the oceans. So those are spiders, scorpions, insects, crabs, shrimps, arthropoda. So arthropoda means joint foot. So again, poda means foot, arthro means joint. And I don't mean, I mean like joints in their foots. So um, found nearly in every habitat, their most successful um, Phylum. Monty's suddenly getting interested again. He's like, what? 
um because we have a friend at home yes i would take her out but she's getting a little ornery in her old age i do have a tarantula she's a chilean rose hair i've had her for many moons a student gave her to me about 16 years ago and i've had her ever since so yep the female tarantulas can definitely live that long. Anyway, so um, they have a segmented body with a hard exoskeleton and compound eyes. Now, they molt their exoskeleton when they grow, and they have a body plan with specialization, like parts like antenna, chelicerae, etc., etc. And again, you can take an entire course on this group. You can take, I actually have taken an entire course just on spiders. Why am I circling shrimps? I like to eat shrimp spiders i've literally just had an entire course i actually have a collection of spiders i don't mean they're alive i mean they're all little tubes um and if i find other ones i don't have i will definitely uh catch them too so um they're a fun bunch uh so basically the first of this group that came up out of this is definitely the scorpions scorpions are basically where a lot of these guys came out of um and crabs as well especially horseshoe crabs horseshoe crabs are ancient um and horseshoe crabs really interesting um because they actually have blue blood um and we actually uh have places that harvest their blood to help us make uh cancer medication so we actually have uh horseshoe crab farms where we hook them up to machines and actually take a portion of their blue blood and use it for cancer research and whatnot so thank you horseshoe crabs for your contribution in fighting cancer um so ancient creatures so again starting down in you know the oceans uh we started with kind of like trilobites and let me show you a trilobite trilobite yeah so these guys are trilobites. My, my grandmother loves trilobites. So anyway, over time, they started turning into, you know, and when I mean time, I mean like hundreds of thousands of years. This was not quick. So anyway, so we went from trilobites to sea scorpions, or at least they kept splitting, 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 splitting out. And these guys were sea scorpions but you can see kind of like where these are guys are going um and they were uh working on and look how big they were look at that is that not insane i would hate to swim in primordial earth's seas i'm sorry that's like i know like analog horror is the big thing on youtube right now but yeah i don't think i want to meet things with that kind of a mouth arrangement so over time these guys realized that hey we have armor on the outside we have these cool specialized mouth bits now how about we take over the land and that's basically where one of these guys got wise and started moving up on the land Now, see, scorpions are extinct. Thank God. <laughs> I'd hate to. I'd hate to be swimming. I mean, I'd hate to be swimming and run into a shark. But at the same time, I'd hate to be swimming and running into those guys. <laughs> so anyway, so they have an exoskeleton. So they decided to to modify that armor so it's segmented so they can move with it. But the problem, and they also used it for support to support all their internals so they can get bigger, bigger, bigger. But the problem is um molting is not fun so imagine cracking out of your entire skin and skeleton without bleeding to death and then you have a fresh exoskeleton that's mushy and um not at all hard and you literally have to puff up afterwards and puff out as much as possible so when it hardens you've got room to grow into it a lot of uh spiders uh die molting i'm so thankful that demona has not she's 
I try, uh, yeah, her name is Demona because what happened was um, um, I was given to her by a student and the student named her Demon. You know, original name. And I was like, I looked at her and I said, this is a girl. They thought it was a boy. Um, this is a girl. I was like, and this is a girl. And uh, for those of, trust me, sexing them, sexing spiders is actually kind of easy hard. There's like certain things you look for. Um, but I figured it out. She's a girl. Um, now girls can live for upwards of 30 years. Boys only live for five. Sorry, insect world is actually dominate, not dominant. Not dominant. Not dominant. Is dominated by females. Sorry, guys. This this uh this group is not your group. Um, yeah, you think praying mantises are bad? It's it's most insects. And same thing with spiders. Um mating is not exactly the males usually try to impress the females enough not to eat them, but it doesn't work, especially in tarantulas. The guys are just like, hi. And the and the girls are like yeah, I don't feel like uh, mating with you, so I'm going to eat you. And then even if the one they feel like mating with that uh, that particular male spider, afterwards they still eat them. So, danged if you do, danged if you don't, man. Sorry. And a lot of these guys have very interesting uh, sexual apparatus. Um, it's a lot of a hook and a lock mechanism between a lot of, the, especially insects, um, that it literally, uh, everything's shaped so it only goes to one species. So it's actually kind of interesting in that way. But yeah, there's a lot of different insects and spiders. Keep in mind, they're separate groups. Um, that uh usually the males will try to bring a gift to the female to distract her long enough to mate with her and then hopefully get away in time before she's done eating the gift so could be worse the dating scene could be totally worse <laughs> like the insect dating scene <laughs> anyway just saying if you're ever cursing your luck in a dating scene, be glad you're not an insect. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, yeah, I can go on and on and on about these guys. Again, each group deserves its own hour of talking about, if not more. Highly recommend. Um, Lots of fun studying these guys. I had a great summer catching and studying these guys up at Highlands Biological Station like three years ago. Lots of fun. So, highly recommend. All right, sea stars. So, now we're backing up again. Um, we went to, from creatures that went from the ocean and made a successful transition up upon the land, living away from the ocean. Um, but now we're kind of going back here's uh sea stars so sea stars sea urchins and sand dollars so they're marine no uh, they possess uh spiny uh calcareous skeletons uh they have secondary radial symmetry and they have uh water uh vascular systems so that's why they don't come up and they if they do they kind of dry out because they literally work on osmosis and little pumps to actually move around. And if you've ever, again, gone to an aquarium and picked up a, uh, uh, were allowed to pick up certain sea stars and they walked across your hand, it's, it's a funky feeling <laughs> because they have these little tube feet to move around and that's by pumping water back and forth through uh, this. They also have, again, really cool abilities in the fact that most of them, if they get an arm ripped off, um, uh they can grow it right back and we have the brittle stars and uh, all sorts of different things um so this is in kinoderma they're an interesting bunch unfortunately this is again we've gone back to the uh sleeping bag body plan they do not have the tube within the tube so unfortunately their mouth is also the place is also their butt so I guess I should have put them in before insects, but that's basically where most people go. But anyway, interesting bunch. Um, this group, uh, like I said, we've got some in here, like the sea cucumber. Uh, unfortunately, if they get panicked, unlike uh, some sea stars, sea stars, um, some of them are like 
really, really ready for battle with those spikes. And some of them, um, if you touch them, they're actually uh, poisonous. Uh, as you can see, sea urchins, which are things that uh, sea otters love to eat because they figured out ways to crack through these things, have these spines that keep most creatures off. Um, but these guys right here, as you can see, they don't really look like they have anything to protect them because they don't. Um, except for this. If they get panicked, sea cucumbers, uh, sea slugs and whatnot, if they get panicked, what they do is they'll actually puke out their own guts. Yeah. So, you know. And then hopefully the predator will eat the guts they just ejected and they'll grow new guts. That's that's a thing. Oh yeah, definitely. Hi there. Just hanging out with some of my distant relatives. Anyway, so now now we've done all the invertebrates, and I may or may not cut here and start.